Let's start then by, by talking um, by talking FIFA, AJ. How good are you? Oh, look, if I'm honest with you, it's about the person you're playing. You're only as good as your last game. <laughs> haven't been on for a little while. I'm actually still on PS4. But we've got the PS5 here today, so slight change of what I'm used to, but, you know, a champion never makes excuses. We get on with it, so I think I'm going to win. And doing it for a very good cause as well. Do you know what? It's massive. Like, the amount of money being donated to organisations that help tackling this worldwide pandemic is phenomenal. So it's a good cause as well. A bit of fun for a good cause go hand in hand. So I'm, I'm glad to be part of this. And, and I guess there's been loads of times, you know, where you felt it so personally, that the in impact of the pandemic, and I guess can see that, that vaccines are, are the only way out of it, really. That's the thing. I feel like the vaccines is like the way the health sector is explaining that to get out of this pandemic, everyone needs to be vaccinated. And people need to push towards getting the vaccine. And it's about people, you know, contributing towards this worldwide pandemic. So at least I can say when it's all said and done, I've done my part, the organisation have done their part. That's a good cause. Let's talk about you then. Where are we with, with Usyk and, and when and where it might be? I'm looking to go, I wanted to go like August, but I feel like change of opponent, complete different style. Team said, push it back a little bit, prepare properly. This is the fight I need to win because, you know, I was at the final destination to that road to Undisputed, but now we're back on the road again. We've got another pit stop we need to make with Usyk. So end of September is when I'll be taking on um, the former Undisputed Cruiserweight Champion of the World, moved up to heavyweight. So it'd be good. Probably in Tottenham. Tottenham is that that a sort of place that you'd uh, you'd relish fighting at? It's an, it's an amazing place. I don't know if you've been before, but it's an incredible place. So I haven't been, but I've heard uh, really really good things about the Tottenham Stadium. So I'm looking forward to it. What sort of um, danger then does does Usyk pose as a fighter? None. I fear none of them. I fear none of them. You don't bring me nothing I ain't seen before. Two hands, two legs, and a brain. That's it, and a bit of heart. So yeah, let's get it on. And is it as simple as, as to say, this is just from your perspective, a box to be ticked, get out of the way and move on to the challenges that everyone wants to see you fighting? Yeah, like it's a, it's a good fighter. It's a good fighter. I'm challenging myself in training. That's what I mean. It's not so much his challenges. They all bring challenges. So I've got to challenge myself in training to get to the next level and go in there and not, not think of the task ahead as something that I'm, I can't do. I don't want to overcomplicate this task. Um, believe in myself, go in there and do what I know I can do. I feel like people don't really know what I can do until they're in the ring with me. So I'll show them what I'm about. And um, as you said, tick another box when, when the final bell goes, if it does go, and then um, on to the next one. In terms of your mentality, do you feel now that you're a, a really nice place in terms of you obviously have that confidence, but you've also suffered the disappointment of having a defeat in your career? So, you know, it's you go in there confident, but but never to underestimate anyone. Exactly that. I've, um, we've expanded the team. I've expanded my own knowledge. I studied the game. Like when I got into boxing, it was a bit of a whirlwind, like moving at 100 mile an hour and even with the way the world is now, with social media and stuff, the world's moving at 100 miles an hour, so you're going at a fast pace. So I've always been trying to slow things down. And with the pandemic, I've been able to slow things down. So like around, you know, after the Ruiz 2 fight, just before then, I made a lot of changes. And during the pandemic, I've been able to keep on pushing towards making changes. And I feel good. I'm, I'm confident. You know, I took it L. I bounce back, but they do say every boss takes a loss. Um, and it's part of winning. It's just part of winning. And we're here now, so I've got to defend these belts again. Um, it's going to be a good fight. And I'm just going to continue defending this throne until I'm ready to give up. And do you think you were talking about the pandemic there? Have you changed, do you think, as a boxer or as a person during it? 100%. Like, when I, when I first started boxing, the whole, my whole world just flipped on its head. Like I had to really like 
step my game up and adapt to this new environment. And then, so imagine I'm upside down now and the whole world's moving at 100 miles an hour. So it's a bit of a whirlwind. And then with a the pandemic, the whole world flipped on its head, which gave me a chance to now look up again. So I flipped on, on my head when I first started boxing. Then during the pandemic, where the world's flipped on its head, it's allowed me to resurface again. And um, I feel like in life, you always need to reset sometimes and go back to what the true meaning of what you're doing is, why you're doing it, reset with who you are, what your values are, and the pandemic's helped me do all that, to be fair. Um, you know full well that the two fights that, that the fans want to see you involved in, AJ, with, with both Wilder and, and Fury. Um, firstly, Deontay, I had a, a couple of things to say last week. As, as I see, they're already making up, this is your camp, by the way, as I see, they're already making up excuses and then he's going to knock you out in devastating fashion. How would you respond to those two? To be honest, this is the first time I'm talking about Deontay Wilder. I haven't spoken about Deontay Wilder. Sorry about that, maybe. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. It's not Deontay Wilder, is it? <laughs> yeah, silence Deontay Wilder. <laughs> but um, this is the first time I'm talking about Wilder, so I don't know what excuses he thinks I'm making. I'm a pro fighter. Check the resume. I've been in with all of them. The new school, the old school, and there's still a lot more to do. Um, I'm fighting a great fighter in Usyk. I'll fight them all. So Wilder's just another one in the pecking order. No problem. So I don't know what excuses he's talking about. And, you know, talk is cheap. It's the cheapest thing to buy on earth is talk. Um, I'm an elite level fighter. I'm not, I'm not one of those tomato cans he's knocked out. So you better watch what he's saying and you know, have a reality check because when they come to me and him to face, uh, I know what I'm capable of doing. That's all that matters at the end of the day. I can say all of this, but I just know who I am and that's all that matters. You say that you're an elite level fighter. Will his place as an elite level fighter be in question if he loses for a second time to Tyson Fury? He ain't an elite level fighter. He ain't, he ain't an elite level fighter, in my opinion. Um, He's good, he's good, it's heavyweights. Um, so they always know one one punch can change the course of a fight. But I've never ever seen in the heavyweight division of a fighter going to war with one weapon in his uh, arsenal, which is what they say is his right hand. But when you get to top level, trust me, that, that don't last anymore, that don't work. So as we've seen now with certain fights of elite level fighters, he struggles, he struggles at top level. Um, and there's a lot more of us waiting for that opportunity as well to kick his ass. So, yeah, he's going to struggle when he comes to fight people like myself and other heavyweights. Atahan, having said that, do you expect Tyson Fury to beat him again then in July? If I'm honest, I don't know. I don't mind. Fury, Wilder, bring them both, you know? So I, I'm not taking sides is what I'm trying to say. They're both enemies of mine, and I want to slay them both with the same, with the same energy. So, honestly... Good luck to both of them. Whichever one wins, I'll be seeing them soon. So talking of seeing them soon, then you, you still want to get into the ring with Tyson Fury. And if so, when do you think that's realistically possible to happen? It should be happening like seven weeks away from now, six, seven weeks away from now. So unfortunately, uh, you know, his team, they let the whole boxing world down. But I'll still be here, still be ready. Still ready to kind of put on a show and end of the year. Well, look, let me get past Usyk first. With or without Usyk in my life, I'm going to fight Fury. Let's put it that way. You know, Usyk's not the end all and be all. Usyk doesn't determine that fight. That fight has to happen. It's a big fight, uh, bigger than boxing, bigger than the belts. So, yeah, it will happen. And I would say um, after I fight my Usyk fight and defend my belts, and hopefully the world's back to normal, you know, these vaccine organizations and charities that are helping with the spread of COVID, COVID vaccines is going to be a good thing in the world. Should be back to normal. This fight is going to be absolutely bigger, better than what it would have been in a few weeks. So would you say then, from your perspective, you're 100% confident that in 2022, you'll fight Tyson Fury? Um, I can only speak for myself. If you're speaking about 258 management, the management guys, we do our part. I'm 100% confident I'll fight him and I'll win. 
you got to ask him the same question, which I'm not too sure because we we done everything, man. Honestly, during a pandemic, one of the toughest times to organise a global fight like that, we managed to have 20,000 fans available, um, site fees, media ready. I had my name on a, on a contract. I was actually preparing, I was in training, and then boom, they cancelled. So on, a, on my end, I stay ready. I fight them all. I'm a throwback fighter. Final question then, AJ, because we started talking about FIFA. So we'll finish by talking about football. I'm guessing that you're following the Euros and what do you, what do you make of England's chances of, of maybe going and, uh, and picking up some, some belts of their own, I guess? Do you know what? They're a good team. They're a good bunch of lads. I feel like they're allowed to be a bit more creative and have a bit more, you know, it's a tough old game sports because safety first and sometimes play to just win but you know a lot of these players have got a lot of character they've got some tough competition in the tournament but tough times bring out the best in people i think if you're a true warrior that is and i think you know the free lions are true warriors so i think they can go all the way but it's up to them they can speak for themselves but with this positive energy i'm trying to push onto them i hope it goes a long way like the rest of the country and they do a job